to Stella Food for Thought and happy Sunday. Happy actual football Sunday. Don't be biased against me because I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. It's been there for life. Today for my football day, I decided to treat my husband and the kids to a good old pot of my Louisiana gumbo since I'm originally from Louisiana. Um, it's a lengthy process, but we're going to get through it together with the gumbo and a little Hennessy VSOP. Um, as you can see, what I've done is actually prepped everything and then I'm going to take and go through some steps of how you can make gumbo um, that's pretty easy. The only thing different that I steered away this time is that I'm adding oxtails instead of, uh, usually I'll do like turkey necks or giblets or gizzards, but I didn't do that this time. I'm just gonna do some oxtails. So if you can come on in so I can show them what we got going on. I have already, this is what they call the Holy Trinity of Louisiana. And it is just some onions that I've chopped up. I've chopped up some celery and I've also chopped up some bell pepper. And then I will also be adding some crushed garlic. Usually I add fresh garlic, but today I'm just doing it as easy as possible. Um, and then here I have my dry seasonings that I'm using, which is some chives some um, basil, a little marjoram. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but hey, it is what it is on Louisiana. Some thyme and some parsley that I'm gonna add. And then this is my favorite bowl right here. This is all my seasons that I'm putting in my gumbo. The lighter red is actually con uh, cayenne pepper. Then I like cumin. Everybody don't use cumin, but I like cumin because it's mine. And then I use some garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, salt, black pepper, and of course, my gumbo filet. Some people do not like to put the filet in the pot when they're making it, but I like to put it in there when I'm making it, during me making it, and after I make it. That's my business. I was saying I use beef sausage this time. Um, I always usually use beef sausage, but I also use um, andouille sausage, but I didn't do that this time. I changed my mind. And as I stated, instead of me using like uh, my normal turkey necks, I decided that I am going to use some oxtails that I always save over because I just want the flavor from the bone. And then I also am going to be uh, using two pounds of shrimp. And that, by the way, is a pound and a half of sausage. And then this here is five boneless chicken breasts that I have cut up. As you notice with all of my meats, they are already seasoned salt and pepper. That is one thing that I wish people would do with their gumbo, but they don't. So what I'll do is I'll get my roux going and then I'll bring you right back into with this. One thing I wanna say, remember, click like, share, and subscribe if you wanna continue to see videos from Stella Food for Thought. Thank you. We're back. What I'm about to do is start my roux. What my roux consists of is butter, a whole stick of butter that I melt down, as well as a cup of flour. Um, so come on in. Let me... And what I like to do is actually cut my pieces of butter into little squares. I find that they melt easier um, instead of just sticking the whole stick in there like that. Some people do that, but I don't. This is just my personal preference. Some people also use like a uh, vegetable oil or shortening. But I like this butter. Another thing is you can use either um, salted butter or unsalted butter. My butter is just salt. When you're making the roux, you need to make sure all of the butter is completely melted. What I will do is add just, this right here is a half a cup. I don't know if you can see that because I use it all the time. A half a cup of flour. Ooh, Lord have mercy, Stella Harris. Half a cup of flour, I'm just sprinkling it like that in here. And then I'm gonna stir this. Now this is where you have to be patient. I have my fire, because I'm cooking on the gas stove on low, and I'm just letting this brown. I will stir it pretty often. Hi guys, we're back. Okay, it has been approximately 35 minutes that this has continued to cook on low. And as you see, the roux has started to really turn a brown cover that you let it sit 
the darker it will get brown gravy. And so from here, I'm going to go ahead on and add a little bit of my um, chicken broth, which is in this cup here. Kind of slowly add it. And I like to do that for myself because I don't like to uh, just stick it in. As you see, it's, it's sticking enough chicken broth in like that. And then I'm gonna whisk it again because I like things to be smooth and not chunky at all. Since I'm doing the um, oxtails, normally at this point I would add turkey necks on my chicken gizzards, but I don't have any, so I'm doing oxtails today, like I stated earlier. Can't put my, my whisk down, and I, I'm just kind of mixing them in, coating it a little bit, because this is just what I do, okay? So, I know people probably going to start critiquing it or whatever the case may be, but that's my business, and my gumbo tastes good. Okay, now I'm going to add my Holy Trinity part of it. I got to get the rest of it. Uh, what I was going to tell you, when I did the Holy Trinity, I did, I chopped up six celery hearts i don't do the leaves some people like the leaves i don't i did one whole medium-sized bell pepper and one whole medium-sized onion i'm so sorry i didn't mention that earlier so i'm gonna like do this a little bit like that i like to just break up my vegetables because that's just me and i know it's gonna break up anyway but it's just a mind over matter thing with me and then i'm just eyeballing my garlic because I love garlic. You know it helps with your blood pressure anyway. So I just like to use garlic. That's just me. I'm going to stir that in there a little bit. Hmm. And then I'm going to add my seeds. Oh, my dry herbs. Herbs, herbs. However you want to pronounce it. My business. Add that in there. I got nothing better to do. I know I keep stirring. I know. I just like the, it's just a, a mind thing with me. Um, like I'm mixing everything, I guess that's what you can call it. And then I am going to put this seasoning in here like nobody's business. No, no exact way of putting it. I'm just putting it all in here. And I'm, I base the measurements of my seasoning off the size of pot that I'm cooking with. Let me run and get some water right quick. So what I've done is, I did two cups of chicken broth. Now I'm doing two cups of water. Plain old, my mom used to say hiding out the hiding um, water. I don't even know what that meant, hiding. I guess it's the sink to, you know, you just never know. That's what I miss about things. I'm gonna turn this up to high because I wanna bring it to a boil. And I am going, now you notice, remember how light my roux was? When I, to me it was, some people say it was lighter than, they'll say it's lighter than what they like. But after you add all of your seasonings and herbs and stuff to it, it tends to get a little darker. And I've learned as times with me cooking in this Dutch oven type cast iron pot, it, it makes it get darker. And so it's just my preference that I like to do. But as I was saying, I am going to now boil these oxtails for probably um, a good 45 to, I'm just, I ain't even gonna lie, I'm gonna bring it up to a boil then turn it down to medium, let it simmer for approximately an hour, and then I will come back, add my chicken, and let it cook for 30 minutes. And then I'll also probably add two more cups of chicken broth, because I've already done two cups of chicken broth, two cups of water, so I kind of rotate it out. Um, and from there, after I add the chicken, let it cook for 30 minutes, on medium then I'll add my sausage and the last thing I'll add to this gumbo today 
is my shrimp because you know it only take a few minutes with shrimp. But this is coming. It, it's, it's smelling good. Don't you think so, cameraman? They can't hear you. They can't. Yeah. They, they can't they can see they can't hear a, a head nod yes <laughs> but i will be back and remember click like share subscribe and also while i'm cooking this i want you to think about recipes that you think you would like to see me make hey guys as you can see can you bring it in a little bit baby the uh oxtails is coming along good you notice the gravy is darker and darker um, that's what I was telling you because this cast iron Dutch oven pot tends to just continue to um, cook, cook, cook like it should. And I have it on medium low actually. It's been cook at, these have been cooking for an hour. So now I'm going to add my chicken. As you see, just like that. Plop. I'm going to put this here. Um, and my chicken keep in mind like I stated earlier on it is already seasoned with just salt and pepper I always season everything that I and I wasn't on video one cup of chicken broth and then the other cup one cup of water um, and mixed it together and the reason why I was going to do two and two, but I was like, this pot might not hold no two and two because this is turning out to be bigger than what I thought. I think the five chicken breasts is going to um, take this over. Now, keep in mind, remember when I said with my gumbo filet, I like to add it in my seasoning before, during, and after. Well, this here is the during part. I'm getting ready to add I, I'm eyeballing it, so don't be trying to ask me nothing. I just sprinkle just like that. Mm. Cameraman, how I smell? Good. How good is good? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> and I'm going to stir this in. And since it's white um, meat, the chicken breast, you know, you don't want to overcook that. So I'm going to um, keep it on the medium low and let put my lid back on and let it cook for 30 minutes. Okay guys, uh, now the sauce, as you can see, the chicken has been cooking for 30 minutes and it's been cooking on low and it's still tender. The oxtails is getting even more tender. The gravy, I don't wanna say gravy, the juice of the gumbo is not thick at all. Um, and you can see all the herbs that I put in there is floating up to the top, which means it's coming along good. So I'm gonna add the sausage. In the meantime, while I was waiting on to do this video, I also started my rice, which is right here. Ooh, I got a little gravy on my. And I usually do rice, I do two parts water, and then for every like two cups of water, you put a cup of rice. That is, That will make the best rice ever. And I usually put the water in the pot, bring it to a boil, um, and then I add the rice after it's to a boil, bring it back to a boil when I add the rice, and then turn it down to low. Best rice. It seems like it's Uncle Ben's rice, and it's not. Just regular old rice. But that's just a secret that I share it with you. So I'm going to let this sausage cook in this gum. Look at this. This is just beautiful. It's so good. I'm so excited. It smells good. Um, I even got family members already coming out their room. My oldest daughter, well, my own, my only daughter, asking, that I gave birth to, asking if the food done. So that means it's smelling up something good. Got their little stomachs growling. But I'm gonna cook this here. <laughs> you know I do. I'm just fine because that's good grease. I'm adding my shrimp. Oh, Lord, watch out, cameraman. Lord have mercy. Oh, that to happen. And, uh, okay. I'm just going to stir that. In. This is going to be so good. Lord, this, when my gumbo look like this, I can tell it is going to be like a slap your mama type gumbo. 